pulse back on the exhale. Slowly inhale. So this is what we call maintaining the danda or staff of the spine. Inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, draw the hands through. So maintaining this fluidity in combination with the stability and enjoy the flow. Hands back to center. Now here you can oscillate the neck anytime you feel yourself becoming rigid, with the face beginning to squeeze. Stay relaxed. Keeping the breath natural and free. Now circle the arms and pull into the center. Circle the arms and pull into the center. And this is what we call finding any weak spot or leak in the core and sealing it up. So you reach around, find a new place in the garden of your belly, pulse there, and keep that exploration now as we pull through the center. So exploring the sides. If you need to straighten your legs, feel free or keep them bent. Explore the side gills, then also explore right through the center of the core. And once you've found that, go ahead and circle the pelvis. And the image here is as if you were skateboarding in the empty bowl of your pelvis. So keep lengthening the tailbone, but exploring all different variations in movement of your pelvis as you strengthen the core spontaneously with gravity. Inhale, lift the hips and exhale back down. Inhale, lift your hips, exhale back down. Inhale, lift your hips, exhale back down. Now keep this rhythm. Next day's relaxed in your hands. Last few rounds. Draw your arms to the side, knees into the navel. Slowly draw the knees to one direction, to the right, and back to center. Exhale, draw the knees to the left, and pull back through center. Exhale, draw the knees to the right, hovering over the earth, and pull the lower belly back to center, changing sides. Exhale. And now we create a variation and it brings creative expression into the fluidity of strength. Now extend your left leg forward and circle it to the left with the right leg following to change sides. Extend the top leg, bend the back leg behind you. And then as you explore that interchange, pull everything through the center, keeping the sacrum stable and exploring your range of motion only with that stable intelligence. And now swing the right leg to the left to change sides. Swing the right leg to the left to change sides. Left leg to the right. Right leg to the left. And three choices here. Come back to center with the legs straight, knees bent, or knees open, and enjoy the fruits of your practice. Strong core, open hips, free spirit. side of the rib cage and exhale away from you. Now let's change sides. Extend the legs up. Take the left foot to the right thigh. Take the foot with your right hand. If you're flexible enough, you can extend into the elbow. Support your neck. Extend the right leg. Knee comes into the navel. Keep the sit bones lifted as you radiate from your core. Stays relaxed. Now we'll review a few movements from the water course sequence. Or you can let your arms flow with your legs. Go ahead and improvise.
revise the rhythm, keep the movement directed into the core. Allow the movement to flow freely through you without flinging the body in space. Keep the energy emanating from the core through the bones of the legs, sparking out through the balls of the feet. Now straighten the hands and feet away from each other again. And we'll prepare to bring this together in a spontaneous flow. So you may be tempted to follow me. So close your eyes. And allow all of these variations now to move through you, emanating from the intelligence of your center, branching out, feeling your creative core connecting through your legs. Open hips, free breath. Follow the sensation through your center. sequence. I'm completely following the energy in my body. Feel free to rest if you need to or take it slower. Enjoy the vitality streaming through you. I always find I have more energy, more stamina when I combine strength and creativity. Now finally come back with me. Take your heels by your buttocks. Inhale, extend the arms overhead. Lift your hips and exhale. Slowly lower your spine down, vertebrae by vertebrae. And then now slowly come up. And as you come up, turn onto your right side and stretch your side waist, lengthening your hips to your feet, bending your elbows, changing sides. Either opening the mouth or tongue to the chin. Inhale and exhale. Now we'll keep that pattern. Inhale, lifting through the navel. Exhale, expand. Now draw your knee into your navel this time as you inhale to the center. Exhale, expand. Inhale, knee to the navel. Exhale, expand. Inhale, knee to the navel. Exhale, expand. Now this time, knee to the navel. Expand the back leg. Inhale, knee to the navel. Go back into plank. And now keep that pulse happening through your center. Lengthen the tailbone to the heels. Lift through the belly. This is pulsation in plank. You can do this on your knees as you exhale, lowering down into half chaturanga. Plank back to chaturanga. So stay with this for a few more cycles. Again, either on your knees or in full chaturanga, feeling the danda or staff of the body, tailbone to the heels, heart drawing forward. And exhale, stretch your hips back into child's pose, circling the wrists behind your hips. Now inhale, interlace your hands and slowly come all the way up to sitting. Now we'll prepare for an advanced Agni Kriya. Now here you draw the knee into the navel with the inhale, and then you leap to the other side. Keep your tailbone low, and then begin variations of this movement, listening to the rhythm. So you can stay with a basic pulse, or like jazz, begin to improvise the movements through your legs. The breath stays free, and after a while, you begin to feel the heat and strength in the center of your belly. Make sure you're taking the weight off your wrist, although you will have some sensation of building strength in the upper body. So as you get familiar with this movement, you can also lift the And now join me. Take your feet back in plank position. Shoulders over the elbows, wrist in alignment with the elbows. And we'll return to this pulsation through the center. Keep radiating the tailbone to the heels, heels stretching away from you. Feel the lightness through the center of your body. Again, you'll feel the strength. 
Upper body keeping the shoulders spreading and lifting, rotating away from each other. You see me gently oscillating the neck so that there's freedom and not rigidity. If you need to at any time, bring your knees down to the earth. Otherwise, stay with this heat. Last breath. Good, and then as you're ready, take the knees down. Sit back on your heels for a shoulder opener. Take one arm up and the other elbow under, Gurudasan. Inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, change sides. Beautiful. Inhale, extend your arms. And then now, come back onto your knees, hands under the shoulders. And here, extend one leg behind you and create a line of energy from that back leg through your core to the crown of the head. Now turn your fingertips slightly in, and as you exhale, bend the elbows to the side, maintaining this line of energy. The breath is natural and free, or you can bring the Kapalabhati breath, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down, inhaling up. So maintain the rhythm without losing any stability in the lower belly. Lower down only as far as you can keep the integrity of this line of energy from the back foot, through the navel, through the spine, to the crown of the head. Enjoy your strength. A few more rounds. And draw your knee down, shift back on your heels. Open the chest, arms to the sky, circling. Roll the shoulder open, interlace the hand behind you, and coming back for the other side. Feet to the pelvic floor and spread your arms wide, radiate the shoulders. As you exhale, draw the hands through the center and take your elbows to the inside of your knees to open your hips. And then we'll come back up into Prana Mudra. Inhale, slowly draw the hands through the center. Full of life. And as you exhale and hands come to your heart, prepare for Vera 2. Turn your right foot out, left heel away. Extend your arms with the inhale. Now while you're drawing your hands to the center with the exhale and inhale, notice drawing the knee over the heel and the inner back thigh lifts. Take your back arm forward and imagine you're pulling a bow and arrow. Now release the arm down, circle it around, and as you pull it through the center, exhale. Inhale around, exhale through the center. So keep your steady focus in the center of the energy. As you're ready, pull through the center and open back into Prana Mudra, coming into Yogic Squat, Malasan. Exhale, release the arms down and back through. Inhale. And as your hands draw through the center, turn to the other side for Vera 2. Expand the arms with the inhale. Exhale, hands back to the heart. Inhale, extend. Exhale, hands back to the heart. Feel the rhythm, and as you're ready, prepare. Draw the back arm forward, pull your bow and arrow again. The thumb of the back hand is up. And as you're ready, release the arm down, and exhale through. Inhale down, exhale through. Inhale, circle around. The breath comes Kapalabhati like. Ahimsa, non-aggressive, awakening your inner strength and focus, and slowly pull through the center line. Come back into yogic squat, circle the arms through Prana Mudra, exhale, take it down towards the earth, elbows to the inner thighs. Now hands underneath your shoulders, straighten your legs, and exhale, empty the spine. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, empty the spine. Inhale, slowly lift. Exhale, relax forward. Now lifting up halfway, draw your arms to the side, flat back, interlace the hands behind you, and exhale.
exhale into Prasarita Padottanasana C. Straightening the legs, stretching your arms behind you. Gradually the hands come towards the earth without force. Keep the inner thighs strong and buoyant. And as you're ready, slowly inhale, come up with a flat back to center. Now draw your feet under your hips and just shake your hands and your feet out. Unwinding, relaxing, and then we'll come into the last Kriya. Bring your hands up to your shoulders and begin twisting through your center. You can open your arms, even with your shoulders. Keep your sacrum stable. As you twist through the center, let your spine rotate on its axis, stimulating the inner fire, opening the arms in freedom. Slowly draw the arms overhead. With the arms extending, inner shoulders relax. Begin to accelerate the twisting to your own desire. Just swing from your shoulders, completely free. Inhale, extend the arms overhead. Exhale, bending your knees, sweep the hands behind you. You can exhale through your mouth as we stay with this flow. Inhale, the chin up. Exhale, bending the knees, arms behind you. Inhale, take in the joy of being alive. Draw that down with gratitude all the way to your heart. Take one hand over each other at your navel. Honoring the inner fire. Go ahead and touch your body now. Bowing the chin towards your heart. Exhale into forward bend. 
So elongate the spine. Keep your breath smooth and steady. And on an inhale, come up into lunge. You can either take your hands to the earth with straight arms or your elbows to the earth. And breathe here as you open your hips with gravity. You can do this kind of as a saunter so that the hips are swaying from side to side. And come into yogic squat again. If you need to sit onto the earth, elbows to your inner knees, hands to your heart. If you can go deeper, prepare for Bhujapidasana, bringing your hands to the inside and then holding your outer ankles. If you can go deeper still, put your hands on the ground and cross one foot over the other. You can also balance one foot on the ground as you begin to evolve in this arm balance and hip opener. Now slowly come down and bring your hands underneath your feet as a counter pose. You can either bend your knees or straighten your legs. And exhale, fold. So the sequence will continue to evolve through the standing poses and the arm balances. So I will always show you the different stages. Extend your arm underneath your right leg. And now draw your left heel to your hip. And if you can, extend your right leg. It's actually possible to follow the different stages. And so some of you are still opening the hip. And those of you that can, will straighten the leg. And we'll all lean back now. And downward dog. So bring your feet together. And the same sequence on the left side. Inhale, open your hip to the ceiling. Exhale, bring the foot forward. Rise into Virabhadrasana 2. And wrap your hand either to the side waist or to the inside of the left thigh. Inhale, extend into Vera 2. And exhale, hand to the shin or to the earth into Triangle Asana. Now inhale, sweep your arm overhead. If you need to, bend your knees slightly. As you prepare for the balance pose, Half Moon or Ardha Chandrasana. Bend your left knee, shift your weight forward, left hand directly in alignment with your shoulder, and now extend your back leg, radiate out of your hip, take your right hand by your side, and only if you feel steady, bend the left knee, bend the top leg, reach back, and catch the foot, and now press your foot into your hand, and open into the quadricep variation of half moon pose. Now inhale, extend your foot out of your hip, and exhale, shift back, so that you can rise into Vera 2. Inhale, shift into side warrior, Exhale, elbow to thigh, arm sweeps overhead again. If you can, take your hand to the inside of your left leg. Exhale, sweep the hand by your side. Inhale, extend the arm to the sky. And now exhale, shift to the earth. Right knee down, left leg straightens. Lift your heart and exhale, bow.
back with your top arm so that the left hand catches your back ankle. stagnant where you are. Continue to extend through your spine, coming to your edge, relaxing into the opening. Now on an inhale, slowly rise and gather your practice to offer to your life. As you bring the left and right hand together at your center, feel the balance between stability and fluidity. Moving outward and being centered. Action and relaxation. People being so different in their constitution and construction that what's beneficial for one person can be over much for another. So don't try to be a hero. If you start to have unpleasant stresses, unpleasant fullness and pressure in your head or your upper back or your neck, just engage the muscles and raise your head up for a while. For as long as you feel the need, then if and when there's time, you can drop your head down again. But the upper spine and the neck are secondary to the lower spine and the pelvis. And slowly come up, please. And just a brief respite now. Place your hands behind you. Stretch your legs out in front of you. We call this the hammock as you lay back on your hands or lay back onto your forearms and elbows. And you can bring your legs up if you wish. You can twist your legs from side to side. The inevitable consequence of doing long yin postures is blood and chi stagnation. So it's normal to feel a little bit tight and ganked up after a long pose. And just a few brief movements, contracting and pointing your toes and your ankles and moving your hips from side to side, just a little respite to move the blood and the chi can be very helpful and make it easier and more comfortable and more pleasant to move from one long yin pose to another. So whether it's one leg at a time, as in this half butterfly pose, or two legs at a time, or soles of the feet together, all forward bends share this characteristic. By making a muscular effort, do we exaggerate the tilt of the 
pelvis and increase the effect on the legs? Or do you relax the muscles of the spine and deliberately round and stretch the spine, which diminishes somewhat, some little amount, the tilt of the pelvis, but increases proportionately the therapeutic beneficial decompression of the spine? A momentary, temporary feeling of fragility and vulnerability is exactly the effect you're trying to feel in your bones in these postures. And hug your knees to your chest, please, cradling your legs. And then the hinging movement again. Hands under your hips, stretch your legs towards the ceiling. Bring your chin up, looking at your feet to engage the abdominal wall. Slowly bring your feet down. Hold the feet just above the floor for a breath or two. And then sit up all the way. Now, mongoose twist. Left buttock is lifting to turn your pelvis to that direction. But your arm is pushing off and resisting that motion. This creates the twist. Now, don't think of this as a static twist because we're not going you don't have the leverage here with your elbow to stay there for a long time it's a muscular relief before the next pose so to slightly move your body and flex and wiggle end and contract it's more of a yang posture the other variation is to not contract the muscles of the spine to let the spine round, because rounding of the spine is what exaggerates the stresses along the tissues of the back side of the spine and the muscles on each side. It will diminish somewhat the effect on your legs, but never completely. And it will increase somewhat the beneficial stresses and tractions on the spine. Particularly important, the lumbar spine and the pelvis, all of the spine, of course, but particularly important, the lumbar spine and the pelvis that are compressed vigorously hours every day. Sitting in a chair is four times as compressive to your lumbar spine as standing. To take the time to decompress first the backside in a forward bend, and the front side and a backward bend. The region of the pelvis and the spine is very important, very beneficial, and very much needed by very modern humanity. But again, steering now away from thoughts of biomechanics, advanced practitioners have long since reached the point where they're going to improve aesthetically in a pose like this. Once the body is laid flat across the legs, and your hands are resting easily gripping your feet, aesthetically, there's nowhere else to go. But each day, every day, the mental, emotional, and physical stresses of living Tighten up the energy channels of the body. Tighten up the fascia of the body. Tighten up the muscles of the body. And for advanced practitioners, they reach this wonderful realm where it's no longer about, am I doing it further? Am I doing it better? And you sort of reach this magical place where it's, I'm just feeling good as I stay in the pose. Experience and experiment. That is your guide. What's important to keep in mind is what is the intention. The intention is to minimize direct compression on the small spinous processes of the upper spine, the upper thoracic, and the neck. At the same time, maintaining or exaggerating the beneficial traction of the muscles and ligaments, not just in the upper spine, but in the neck as well. 
Now, one of the major considerations of this posture is do you as the practitioner push your legs straight and or do you bend your knees, pulling yourself aggressively into a rounded position, putting the most traction on the upper spine and neck. This is certainly a very beneficial pose. It's been done this way for a long time. But like everything else, it's not for everybody. It can, even if you have the capacities to do this variation of rolling high up onto the neck, high up onto the base of the head, you might also want to explore the variation of holding on to your calves or your legs or your feet and letting your pelvis roll down one third or one half of the way. This places stresses on different areas of the spine. Other people find both different and equally effective. But again, the intention of why it was sequenced here at this time was we've done forward bend after forward bend after forward bend. And so now in order to prepare the spine, the joints and the discs and the tissues and the energies of the body to go opposite, let's introduce a twist, which is a neutralizing movement with a gentle arching back bend. And slowly release your leg, let your legs relax, roll back onto your back in a natural, easy way. It's a little tricky to learn to get into this posture, but once you've found your way there, it's easy to find your way back, and believe it becomes quite natural. But I'll talk you through it as clearly as I can. If you draw your right knee up and then stretch your right leg, and push it up and over to the left. The idea is you want to twist your pelvis and get on top of that thigh. So put your toes on the floor and move that knee and thigh back. It's almost as if you've turned onto the top of your left thigh. Once you've done that move, you've pretty much entered into cattail pose. The rest is details. Holding your head on your hands, bend the back leg, catch hold of the foot. And here are the two, again, the two major variations. Do you simply stay up on your hand, pulling the foot in towards your buttock to stretch and elongate the front of the thigh? Or do you carry to the variation of let that foot move away from you and pull you back like a bow posture and dropping the head and shoulder back enter into a twisting backbend. Two different approaches to the same pose. Some people prefer stretching the thigh. Some people prefer twisting and rotating with an arch. Some people find both very effective. And they go from one variation for a minute or so to the other variation for a minute or so. So these flexibilities here are very important for how the pelvis is free to tilt or not. Related to that is on the back side of the body, the arching pressure into the sacrum. That pressure on the lumbar spine and on the sacrum is compression. This stress here on the front of the hip and the thigh, this is tension. But on the back side, compression. The reason for compression is we're trying to put strong vectors of force against the sacrum. The sacrum, like any other joint of the body, but more than any other joint of the body, tends to become fixated as we age. Which is exactly like it sounds. The joint surfaces bind so closely together and the ligaments binding those joints together become so tight that after a time, if it's not routinely exercised in yoga like this, we lose the iliosacral joint. If a joint doesn't move, we've effectively lost it. 
This is the quote unquote natural aging process to lose this facility of this joint. And it's scary and frightening for many people to try to put any stresses into their sacrum and lower back, whether it's forward bends or backward bends. And if there's one thing this sequence of postures has done is to aggressively address that area. Not aggressively addressing it with force, but with time. Try to feel your energy descend to your belly, to the lower belly below your navel, the dantian. And then to finish, bring your hands, palms together, and raise the energy to your heart. Namaste. Namaste. With your eyes closed, take a moment to just feel in your body what happens when you consider this aspect of your life. When you consider wealth, our world, your life is so abundant with wealth. Let's take some time to just meditate on the energy of abundance. Begin by just considering the wealth of your body. How valuable is your physical body. Think of the abundance just contained within the walls of your skin. 